ladies and gentlemen. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, May 18th. It was cool in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Bunko Fugitive Division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Didion. My name's Friday. A pawnbroker we knew came into the office. He said he suspected that a man had been swindled. He offered to tell us about it. We were ready to listen. Maybe just wasting my time, yours too. But it sure looked like a con game to me. Well, what's the sting? Well, a fella came in last night, little guy, kind of timid. Probably never been in a pawn shop before. At least he wasn't a steady. I can spot him straight off. Yeah. Wanted to pawn a ring, big green stone, fancy setting, all gimmicked up, you know? Mm-hmm. Man's ring, real fancy though. Asked me what it was worth. What'd you tell him? Worth 20 bucks, maybe 25. Is that what you told him? <laughs> you know I can't loan full value, now you know that. Yeah. I offered him five bucks. Would have gone up to ten if he'd pressed me. Uh, that's better than a lot of brokers give. he take the five? You kidding? <laughs> he went all to pieces. Thought he was going to have a hemorrhage. Started calling me a crook. Said the ring was an emerald. Shouted and screamed all over the place. It's an emerald, he said. A $5,000 emerald. <laughs> that hunk of glass. Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? I ask you, Sergeant. Would anybody try to pawn a 5G emerald with me? I ask you. Yeah. Glass, that's what it was. Green glass. Nice setting, though. What do you think, Joe? The old diamond switch, maybe. Could be. Sounds like the only difference is the color. Did you get his name, Fred? I asked him. He just shouted and carried on. Wasn't making no sense at all. I got his license, though. Yeah. Yeah, he was parked right in front of the place. Got the number when he drove off. Thought you might want it. Mm-hmm. Ah, here it is. On the inside. You make it out all right? Yeah. We'll check on it, Fred. Might be a good idea if you got right on it. What do you mean? Just before he left my place, he stopped all that carrying on. Think it sunk in, but I told him about the ring being no good. Yeah. Got real quiet, kind of like he was making up his mind about something. Mm-hmm. Asked me to sell him a gun. Fred Alpin gave us a description of the man who had tried to pawn the ring. We checked the license number with a local branch of DMV. They came up with the information that the automobile bearing that license was registered in the name of Garfield Hunt. 221 North Selma Avenue, Hollywood. 9.03 a.m., Frank and I drove out to talk to Hunt. Good morning, ma'am. Who are you? What do you want? Is Mr. Hunt here? No. No, he isn't. Well, he lives here, doesn't he? Well, who are you? I'm sorry, we're police officers. My name's Friday, this is Frank Smith. Police? Yes, ma'am. Where is he? What's happened? Ma'am? Don't try to break it easy. Just tell me, what's happened to Gar? You're Mrs. Hunt, are you? He was in an accident, wasn't he? I just knew it, the way he was acting yesterday. All keyed up. He shouldn't have gone out last night. He never was a good driver. I told him a hundred times. Maybe we don't follow you, Miss Hunt. Well, my husband, that's why you're here, isn't it? Well, yes, ma'am. We'd like to talk to him for a minute. Talk to him? That's right. You're telling me the truth. He's not hurt or anything. Not as far as we know. But you're a policeman. Would you mind if we come inside? Might be a little easier to talk. Yes, of course. Thank you. I'm afraid the living room isn't very presentable. I didn't have a chance to put the bedding away yet. That's all right. I slept in here last night, so I'd be near the phone. I thought he might call. I thought somebody would call. Your husband didn't come home last night? Never happened before. Not in 37 years. Yes, ma'am. Oh, just let me put this bedding away so here, you can sit down. Here, I'll help you. Oh, thank you. Oh, there we are. Just put it in that chair over there. Okay. Do you have any idea where your husband might have gone? No, no idea at all. He didn't say? Well, I asked him, but he wouldn't tell me. Just said it was going to be a surprise. What time did he leave? About 9.35. I looked at the clock as he went out the door. I couldn't believe it. Not like Guy to go out that late. We're usually in bed by 10. Yes, ma'am. 
He promised me he'd only be gone an hour. He promised me he'd be back here by 10.30 for sure. I see. Never heard a word from him after that. Not a word. What do you suppose happened to him? We don't know, Miss Hunt. You must have some notion. No, ma'am, we don't. You said you wanted to talk to him? Just a few questions, routine. About what? We'd rather ask him. Did you notify the police that he's missing? No. I didn't know what to do. I figured you'd get in touch with me when you found him. I guess I wasn't thinking very good. Never happened before. Mm -hmm. You got a picture of your husband, Miss Hunt? I have one. Would you like to see it? Yes, if we could. He doesn't look like a grandfather, does he? We have three. Is that so? Mind if we take this along? You won't let anything happen to it, will you? We'll be careful. It's the only one I have. Yes, ma'am. Do you think you can find him? We'll do our best. I guess I should have notified you last night. Yes, ma'am. I didn't know what to do. I thought you'd get in touch with me if something had happened. It's always better to call us first. I guess so. Then it might not happen. We advised Mrs. Hunt to make a formal report of her husband's disappearance to the Hollywood Division. A local and an APB were sent out. 3.15 p.m. Patrol car unit 9L78 reported Hunt had been found sitting in his car. The car was parked on Mulholland Drive. Hunt had readily identified himself. We asked the officers to bring him in for questioning. Joe. Yeah. Here's your man, Garfield Hunt. Thank you. All right, sit down there, Mr. Hunt. Go ahead, sit down. What do you want with me? We'd like to talk to you, Mr. Hunt. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. I do. Never been under arrest before, not once. You're not under arrest now, Mr. Hunt. Then what do you want to talk to me for? Why those officers asked me to come here? You didn't go home last night. Your wife has been kind of worried about you. I was going to go home when they found me. Wasn't any place else to go. I just shouldn't have called you. She didn't call. How'd you find out? You tried to buy a gun. Pawn shop over on Main Street. Oh. What'd you want the gun for? They wouldn't sell it to me. What'd you want with it? Don't need it now. Not now. They're gone. Who are you talking about? Who's gone? Wouldn't have hurt them. Just wanted my money back. Thought I could scare them, that's all. Well, who were they? Said they were renting the store next to mine. Came out first of last week. Measured the frontage. Heard them pounding around inside, hammering and all. Like they was getting ready to move in. Said they were jewelers. Going to open up a valley branch for Lazingwells, you know. Big jewelry store down, down here. Mm -hmm. Seemed like real nice fellas. Bought me lunch a couple of times. Pleasant. Friendly like, glad to have them moving in. The more business there is in the neighborhood, the better off everyone is. Yeah. Crooks. That's what they were, out and out crooks. Went looking for them early this morning. Back door to their store was open, the one next to mine. Go ahead, Mr. Hunt. Couldn't find hiding or hair of them. Place was empty. How much money did they get from you? Not them, exactly. Fellow working with them. Must have been working with them. Only way it makes sense. All right, now suppose you tell us all about it. In cahoots with that mother, too. Must have been. Came into my shop day before yesterday. Long about one o'clock in the afternoon. Called himself Norman Crist. Said he was from Greeley. Greeley? Town in Colorado, where my brother lives. Said he knew my brother Oscar back there. What do you want with you? Claimed Oscar asked him to look me up. See how I was doing. Probably didn't know Oscar at all. They must have told him. Them jeweler fellas. Yeah. Got to thinking back. Remember I mentioned having a brother in Colorado one day when we was having lunch. Told him the town, too. Greeley. What happened then? Did he sell you the ring? You know about that, too? You tried to pawn it, didn't you? No, sir, not really. Just wanted to find out how much it was worth. So I could tell Ida. I'm going to surprise her. Figured I'd give him another day before I tried to sell it. You still have the ring, Mr. Hunt? Threw it away up there in the hills. But tell me, how'd you happen to buy it? I wasn't buying it outright. I was just loaning him on it. I see. Told me he had a chance to option some property out near Encino. Real bargain. Said he had to close the deal by 5 p.m. that same day. Needed cash for a clincher. Mm-hmm. Had to get the money from Colorado, that's what he said. He was afraid it wouldn't be here in time. Couldn't go to a bank. Didn't have any credit in L.A. Yeah. Needed $3,000. Said if I loan him the three, he'd give me back 4,000 first thing in the morning. Offered me his ring for security. 
Said it was worth 7000 easy. Said it cost him more than that. You hand the money over? No, sir, not by a darn sight. Told him I didn't have 3000 Told him straight out. Mm-hmm. Said all I had was 1500 in my savings account. Guess I shouldn't have said that. Yes, sir. Guess that was my first mistake. He thought about it for a minute. Asked if he'd use my phone. Called somebody. Talked to him for a couple of minutes. When he hung up, he told me he might be able to swing it for 1500 He'd have to go out there and see him in person. Said he'd come back. Did he leave then? Not right away. I stopped him. Told him there wasn't no point in coming back. While he was on the phone, I had a chance to do some thinking. Realized I didn't know nothing about him, nothing about the ring. I'm no jeweler, I said. How do I know that ring's worth $7,000? I'm not calling you a liar, but how do I know? He said he didn't blame me for being cautious. Sure, I had good business sense. Took off the ring and laid it on my counter. Told me to get it appraised while he was gone. Uh-huh. I went next door to ask those fellows who said they were jewelers. Place was locked up, so I figured they were still out to lunch. I figured maybe they was in the drugstore down on the corner. Did you find them there? Yes, sir. What'd they say about the ring? Perfect emerald. That's what they said. One of them put a gadget up to his eye. Looked through it. You know what I mean. Yeah. Perfect emerald. Worth $10,000. Not a flaw in it. Mm-hmm. Acted like they thought it was mine. Offered to buy it if I wanted to sell. I told him about the other fella, that he needed $3,000. Told him the whole story. Uh-huh. They said they loaned him five without batting an eye. Offered to make out a check right then and there. Kind of took my win away, they were so anxious. I said maybe we could go in 50-50. They'd put up 1,500, I'd put up 15. That way the guy would have 3,000 if he still needed that much. We could both make a little profit. One of them asked me how I wanted the check, if he should make it out to me. I told him to make it out to cash. How'd he sign it? Jones. Quincy Jones. That's the name I knew him by. Other one called himself Wyatt Truesdale. I don't think that's a real names, though. Probably... What is it you call them? Aliases? Yes, sir. Aliases. Well, anyway, I went over to my bank and drew out the 1500 About 2.30, the fellow come back, the one who gave me the ring. Yeah. Said he tried to talk the real estate people into being satisfied with 1500 Wouldn't come down. Insisted on the whole 3000 I told him not to worry that I had it. Gave him my 1500 and the check. He said the check would be okay, seeing as how it was on a local bank. Promised he'd pay me back in the morning. That was yesterday. Yes, sir. When he didn't show up, I just wanted to make sure how much it was worth. The ring. Yeah. Offered me $5 for it. Man in the pawn shop. Couldn't believe him at first. Said it was just glass. A hunk of glass. Then it come to me. How I'd been tricked. All of a sudden, it come to me. Well, now, why'd you stay out all night? Why didn't you go home? Couldn't face her. I'd uh, Knew I'd been swindled. Fifteen hundred dollars. Every cent we'd saved. Been married for 37 years. It was Ida's money, too. Not just because she's my wife. Helped earn it. Well, we'll try and get it back for you, Mr. Hunt. Not much to show for 37 years, is it? That's what I kept thinking while I was sitting in my car up there in the hills. All day long, just kept thinking. 37 years. $1,500. Yes, sir. Too late to start all over again. We won't have them. Not a chance. Have what, sir? Another 37 years. Using Garfield Hunt's description of the three suspects, the stats office came up with 24 possibles who had worked similar M.O.s. We showed mugshots to Hunt. He identified two of the photographs, Ernest Wilcoxon and Parker Cleaver. Hunt was positive that Wilcoxon and Cleaver were the men who had rented the store next to his and pretended to be jewelers. 
he was unable to find a photograph of Norman Crisp, the man who had sold him the ring. We pulled the packages on Wilcoxon and Cleaver. They had both done time for grand theft. They had not previously worked with a third person. A local and an APB were sent out on all three suspects. Using the information from their mama sheets, Frank and I began checking various places Cleaver and Wilcoxon had been known to frequent. 8.12 p.m. We went into the Black Parrot Bar on South Broadway and talked to the bartender. Wilcoxon and Cleaver, huh? Yeah, that's right. Not by those names, I don't know them. Maybe these will help. Well? Yeah, they come in here once in a while. They always come in together? As far as I know. Ever have a guy with them, tall, thin, dark hair, about 30? No, no, just the two of them. Never seen him with another guy. Mm -hmm. Why do you want them? You know where we can turn them? Well, they ain't here now. We can wait. Well, they won't be in tonight. How do you know? They got money. Oh? Big roll. One of them was in yesterday, Quincy Jones. That's what he told me his name was. Yeah. Been running a tab. He paid it up in full. That plenty left over. Mm-hmm. As long as they're carrying a the roll, they don't come to my place. Head for them expensive joints, like out in the strip, places like that. When they're blowing their loot, come back to me and start running up another tab. I called them on it, but what can you do? This way I get some of their bundles. You know where they live? Around here somewhere. Couldn't pin it down for you. Who could? How bad you want to find out? How do you mean that? Cost you a drink. You that thirsty? Not for me. Girl over there in the booth, the brunette. Mm -hmm. She knows him. Been out with him a couple of times. I've seen him leave together. Okay. Oh, it's only kidding about the drinks. It's on the house. For you guys and her too. We don't want any, but we'll pay for hers. Around here, aren't you? That's right. Stan's a new talent around this place. We're police officers, miss. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. How do you like that? Ma'am? Oh, my horoscope said I was going to meet somebody new today. <laughs> you know, in the morning paper. Uh -huh. Didn't say it'd be cops. Where'd that come from? These guys. Oh, you shouldn't call them guys, Jake. A fellow buys a lady a drink, that makes him a gentleman. From these gentlemen, that's what you should say. Oh, sure. You're very good health. What can I do for you? The bartender says these men are friends of yours. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't say that this is the most flattering picture, but there's a resemblance. You know him, then? Well, we've met. We weren't formally introduced, but we've met. You meet a lot of people here. Not the best people in town, but it's not the best bar in town. <laughs> it's convenient. I work down the street. Mm -hmm. Eight hours a day, five days a week, time and a half for Saturday, if we work Saturday. Seven of us in one office, seven young ladies, ages 32 to 60. I'm 32. Yeah. Well, they don't come in here. The other six. That's something. I suppose you'd care to hear the sad story of aging white collar girl. Do you know where they live? Oh, you mean these so-called friends of mine? That's right. I might. Well? Did you ever hear of the Norcross Arms Hotel? Mm-hmm. Well, I haven't been there with them, of course. In fact, I'm not even sure if it's their residence. But Quincy was carrying a hotel key one night, and it fell out of his pocket. And that was the name on the tag, Norcross Arms. Okay, thanks. Thank you for the friend. Don't mention it. All right, what do I owe you? Six bits. She drinks good stuff. Keep the change. Looks like I got a decent break for once. What do you mean? I'm paying their tab today before you pick them up. You got it wrong. They didn't pay it. Huh? Who did? A fellow by the name of Hunt. The 
clerk at the Norcross Arms Hotel told us that two men who resembled Wilcoxon and Cleaver were registered under the names of Jones and Truesdale. He said they'd gone out for the evening. He showed us up to their room, 36A. We asked him about the suspect known as Norman Crist. He told us he had never seen anybody with Wilcoxon and Cleaver who answered Crist's description. 2.48 a.m., Wilcoxon and Cleaver returned to their room. We took them into custody and drove them down to the city hall for questioning. How many times do you want to hear it? Until we get the truth. Does Hunch say he gave us any money? He never gave us a cent, did he, Ernie? No. We paid a couple of lunch tabs of his. That's right. Always managed out fumble us. Owes us a couple of lunches. He paid them back. Hmm? 1,500 bucks buys a lot of lunches. What 1,500? You got your share. You've been spending it all over town. Hunt say gave it to us? You still had over 600 when we picked you up. Now, where'd it come from? Hollywood Park. Picked three long shots yesterday. Want the horse's names? Where's Chris? I told you before, I never heard of him. Who is he? The guy you worked the game with. Never heard of him. You want to take this rap yourselves? What rap? Why'd you rent that store out in the valley? Store? We showed him your mug shots, the man you rented it from. He made you. Now, you want it in person? I guess they got us there, Ernie. Yeah. We were going to open up a bookie joint. A what? Changed our minds. Looked the situation over, decided it might get a little warm out in the valley. Cleared out. Bookie joint, huh? That's right. Not a jewelry store. What are you talking about, us? Jewelers? Ernie and me? That's what you told Hunt. Nothing of the kind. Laid it on the line, told him we were bookies. Just between us, he was kind of pleased about it. Likes to play the horses himself. Like the idea of being able to lay a bet so convenient. Oh, sure. Say, maybe that's what happened to his money. Maybe he lost it on an egg. All right, you two, let's try it again. Now, why'd you rent that store? You're gonna get the same answers. Same questions, same answers. Wasted time. We got plenty. Hmm. 72 hours, that's all you got. You could hold us on suspicion for 72, then you turn us loose. Unless you prove something. We'll prove it. How? We didn't take any money from Hunt. Nobody says we did, not even him. If he wasn't marked for this, uh, what's his name, Chris? Yeah. How do you wrap us into the package? Hunt never saw us with him. Nobody saw us with him. We'll find somebody. 72 hours. Then you gotta turn us loose. That's the law. Yeah. We know the law. Why'd you break it? We continued to question the suspects, but we were unable to break them down. Thursday, May 19th, 7.45 a.m. Another team of detectives took over the interrogation. Frank and I went back to the office. Well, you think they'll cop out? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. Unless we come up with Chris. No. Yeah. Did you call Faye? Yeah. Oh, she let me have it. Kept dinner till after 10.30 last night. You're lucky, Joe. Yeah, maybe. Wonder if I'll get home tonight. I got it. Uncle Friday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sounds like him. Oh, how long ago? No, not now. Right. Thank you. Fits the description. Smashed up a car on the Hollywood freeway. Georgia Street recognized him from our teletype. Was he able to talk? Died ten minutes after they brought him in. At the morgue, the victim, Garfield Hunt, identified the body. He was positive it was the man who had sold him the ring, Norman Crist. Will Coxon and Cleaver were also shown the body. They denied that they'd ever seen Crist before. The next day, Friday, May 20th, the evidence against Will Coxon and Cleaver was taken to the district attorney's office. A complaint was refused. The evidence was deemed insufficient to bring the matter to trial at this time. Will Coxon and Cleaver were released. 6.05 p.m. Frank and I got ready to sign out. That really tears it. Yeah. The DA's office knows they're guilty. We know it. Can't do a thing. Yeah. We've been wasting our time, Joe. Just going through the motions. Oh, no. We got them pegged and they'll stay pegged. Yeah? Next time they move in on a mark, we'll sit on them. Wouldn't be very smart of them to try it twice. They're not very smart. Huh? They tried it once. Two months later, on July 12th, the two suspects were apprehended for a similar crime. On November 6th, the trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The 
The suspects were tried and convicted of grand theft one count and received sentence as prescribed by law. Grand theft is punishable by imprisonment in the county jail for a period of not less than one year or for a period of from one to ten years in the state penitentiary. Thank you.